Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. In this video, I'll share a couple of interesting probability questions about decks of cards. Problem one, a standard deck of 52 playing cards is shuffled. The cards are turned up one by one until an ace appears. Is the next card, the one following the first ace, more likely to be the ace of spades or the two of clubs. A version of this problem appears in the textbook by Sheldon Ross, First Course in Probability. Problem two, a deck of 52 cards is placed in order. The deck is shuffled properly. How many cards on average do you expect to be in the same spot as before the deck was shuffled? What if the deck was 10 cards or 100 cards, or n cards, what would the answer be? Pause the video if you'd like to give these problems a try, and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve these problems. So let's solve the first problem. So intuitively, it seems that the two of clubs is more likely than the ace of spades following the first ace. If the first ace is not the ace of spades, then either card is equally likely. But if the first ace is the ace of spades, then only the two of clubs can appear. So it seems that the two of clubs should be more likely than the first ace. This is what most people think, and this was also my first reaction. But of course, this is wrong. It turns out both are equally likely. So let's do this calculation. We'll start out with the ace of spades following the first ace. A deck of 52 cards can be arranged in 52 factorial ways. Every ordering can also be obtained by arranging the 51 other cards and then inserting the ace of spades in one of 52 positions. For each of the 51 factorial orderings, there is exactly one spot to place the ace of spades to follow the first ace. So the probability of the ace of spades after the first ace is equal to the number of ways to arrange the ace of spades after the first ace divided by the number of ways to arrange all 52 cards. This is equal to 51 factorial divided by 52 factorial, which equals one over 52. So now, Think about this calculation and every single spot that we referred to the ace of spades. In fact, the exact same logic will apply to the calculation if we change the card to the two of clubs. It's exactly the same calculation. There are 51 factorial ways that you could put the two of clubs after the first ace, and there are 52 factorial ways that you could arrange the deck. So once again, this probability is equal to 1 over 52. And therefore, the actual answer is that the two of clubs is just as likely as the ace of spades following the first ace. Both of them are equal to 1 over 52. And that's the answer. Even though we've done this calculation carefully, it still just seems wrong. So is there any other way to understand the answer? So notice we have a deck of 52 cards and the probability is one over 52. So if we had a deck of n cards, the probability would be one over n. So let's do an example where n is a smaller number. Let's do n is equal to three and see that in fact, the probability works out to one over three. So we'll take a deck of three cards and the probability should be one over three for both cases. So we'll say a deck has three cards of the ace of spades the two of clubs, and the ace of hearts. So how many ways are there to arrange a deck of three cards? There are three factorial, which equals six different ways to order the deck. So let's just put them all out. So now we want to take the very first ace in each arrangement and see which card immediately follows it. So in the first arrangement, it's the two of clubs. In the second arrangement, it's neither the ace of spades nor the two of clubs. In the third arrangement, it's again, neither of those two cards. 
In the next arrangement, it will be the Ace of Spades. Then we have the Two of Clubs. And finally, we have the Ace of Spades. So following the first Ace, the probability that we have a Two of Clubs is equal to the probability we have an Ace of Spades. And each of these is equal to two over six, which equals one over three. So this proves that our intuition was not right, but our careful calculation was correct. Both probabilities are equal to each other. Now let's solve problem two. So in a deck of 52 cards, there are 52 factorial ways to randomly order the deck of cards. This is about eight times 10 to the power of 67, which is an astronomically large number. If you counted one arrangement for every second of the age of the universe, which is about 14 billion years, that is four times 10 to the power of 17, which is still less than 10 to the power of 18. So every random shuffle of a new deck of cards is likely a specific arrangement of cards that has never happened before. So after you shuffle, how likely is it that the first card will be in exactly the same spot of the first position? There are 52 equally likely positions the first card could go, so the probability that it's in the same spot is 1 over 52. But this is true for each card, the second card, the third card, and so on. So let xk be a random variable that's equal to 1 if the kth card is in the same spot. That happens with probability 1 over 52. And let it be equal to 0 otherwise. So we will calculate the expected value of xk. This is equal to 1 multiplied by 1 over 52, which equals 1 over 52. So now let's do our calculation. We want the expected number for each of these cards. So we want to know how many of the 52 cards stay in the same spot. So we want the expectation of the sum of x1 plus x2 plus so on to x52. The expectation of a sum is equal to the sum of the expectations by linearity of the expectation operator. So this is equal to the expected value of x1 plus the expected value of x2 all the way up to the expected value of x52. But each of these expectations is equal to 1 over 52. There are 52 terms that are equal to 1 over 52, which means this expectation is equal to 1. Therefore, in a random shuffle, you can expect one card to be in the same position. But what if the deck had n cards for n greater than or equal to 1? We just need to modify the argument from n is equal to 52. So wherever we have 52, we can replace that with n because the exact same logic will apply. Each of the n cards will have a 1 over n chance and there will be n cards. So we just change 52 to be n in each of these arguments and we end up with exactly the same result. If you have a deck of n cards, you still will expect one card to be in the exact same position. This is true for any size deck n greater than or equal to one. So it could be a deck of just one card or 10 cards or a hundred cards or a thousand cards, a myriad of cards, one lack of cards, one million of cards, one crore of cards, one billion of cards, a Google of cards, or even Graham's number of cards. In a random shuffle, you can expect one card to be in the same position after shuffling. What a surprising result. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.